Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews. I hope you're doing very well today. Today, we're going to continue our walk through the blue book. I have the blue book right here. You can purchase it on Amazon, and I don't make any money off the sale of that. So I feel I can ethically recommend that you purchase Mark Clinic's blue book. This is a book of facts. It is not NCLEX style questions. It, these are just fundamental facts that you have to know in order to pass and click. So that's the purpose of the blue book. Let's go ahead and get started talking about what I want to talk about today. So today we're talking about prioritization protocols. This is on pages 14 and 15 in the blue book. And there's essentially four that I want to talk about. So there's and and uh, two of these I actually talked about in my previous prioritization lectures. So that's why I'm not going to spend an an endless amount of time on these because I've already done two full prioritization lectures and I've done some other prioritization lectures that use some of these uh, protocols. Okay. So Maslow, ABC, expected versus unexpected and stable versus unstable. So first of all, you have to know that Maslow, ABCs, expected un versus unexpected is used when you have one patient and they tell you the one patient in the question. Stable versus unstable is used when you have four patients. That's the only time you use stable versus unstable. So when they say, who do you see first? Then you pick the unstable patient. If they say, who are you going to assign to the LPN? You pick the stable patient. If they say, who are you going to assign to the new grad? You pick the stable patient. If they say, who are you going to assign to the nurse pulled from another unit? You pick the stable patient. So the only time you do use stable unstable is when you have four patients. And you have to remember that, y'all, if you're going to use these protocols, you got to know when to use them. They work, absolutely work 100% of the time if you use them at the right time. So Maslow ABC expected versus unexpected is used when you have one patient. Now, Maslow is what you use when they give you multiple symptoms in the question. They'll say you have one patient with this problem and here's their symptoms. Then it says which either which problem will you address first or which order will you implement first? Or it'll say which is your priority problem. And you pick the one that is either the physiological or the safety problem. There's an order. You, you choose the, the physiological problems first. You address the physiological problems first. Then you address the safety problems. Then you address the comfort problems and then the psych problems. It doesn't usually go much past that although social and then spiritual is the order. So number one is physiological. These are objective problems like a blood pressure number is objective. A potassium level is objective. Uh, crackles in the lungs is objective. And then you have safety. Safety is things like their uh, risk to self-harm, to commit suicide, their risk for seizure, uh, something like that. Okay, that's safety. And then comfort or subjective problems, like um, I feel whatever they say, I feel, I feel short of breath, I feel hungry, I feel nauseated. These are comfort, so that's third. And then psych is fourth. Psych is any psych diagnosis or any abuse situation. It could be a substance abuse, it could be uh, verbal abuse, it could be sexual abuse, it could be physical abuse. Those are psych issues, they're considered psych issues. Fifth is social. Social is things going on around the patient. So they might be homeless. Um, they might, uh, their parents might be getting divorced, something like that. It's like the environment in which they find themselves. And then last is spiritual and spiritual is always hopeless. Okay. Hopeless. That's always the last thing. So Maslow says when you have one patient and they have multiple problems and they give you the problems in the question, not in the, not in the answers, they give you the problems in the question and they ask you, what's your priority? You choose the one that's either physiological safety or safety. Those are always your top priority. And then if there's not one of those, then you can address the subjective problem. If there's not one of those, then you can uh, intervene with the psych problem. Okay. ABCs is only used in one situation. There's only one time when you use ABCs, y'all. And that's when you have multiple physiological problems. So remember, I said physiological is your top priority, right? Well, if you have multiple physiological problems, like you have, let's see, hypoxia and a blood pressure of 200 over 100. Okay, those are both objective findings. Hypoxia, 
blood pressure 200 over 100. Then you go ABCs, and I would have to address the hypoxia first. Now, remember, the word hypoxia is objective. That by definition, hypoxia means low O2 set, whereas dyspnea is subjective. I feel short of breath. That's dyspnea. All right, and then expected versus unexpected. This is used when you have one patient with a problem. They identify the problem. Uh, usually it's a diagnosis um, or it's a circumstance they're in. They could be delivering a baby. That's not a diagnosis and it's not a problem. It's just the situation in which they find themselves. But whatever it is, they have one patient and they find themselves in this situation, but there's no symptoms in the question. The symptoms are all in the answers. And then it says, which are you most concerned about? And you have to pick which symptom you're most concerned about. You're always most concerned about the unexpected finding. You're most concerned about the unexpected finding. Now, stable versus unstable. We, we spend a lot of time talking about this in clinic reviews. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, okay? Because I don't want to take what we charge to teach. We charge money for the clinic review. So I don't want to take what we charge for and give it away for free here. But I will say that when you have four patients, you always see the unstable patient first. And I do have one of those questions here. You also will focus on stable versus unstable if you do our tutoring, our small group tutoring. Okay, you can go to clinicreviews.com to sign up for tutoring. And Mark does, pretty sure Mark does that tutoring um, where he, he talks about how to differentiate between those. Hello, Clinic Review family. As most of you know, this YouTube channel is a part of the Clinic Review NCLEX review business that's run by Mark Klimek. And the YouTube channel is an opportunity for you to see what we do and how we help you pass NCLEX without any cost to you. But we also offer some things that you can pay for that are really worth paying for. And I want to tell you a little bit about those things. So if you go to clinicreviews.com, uh, you will see when you first get there, it'll tell you about Clinic Connect. And Clinic Connect is actually a free community that you can join. And Mark Klimek does participate in the Klimek Connect community. So you can join that. You can actually see some videos from Mark Klimek and you can have some interaction with him. You can ask him questions and so forth and make recommendations that you would like to see. If you go ahead and scroll down, you actually will see some of the other products that we provide. You can see our world famous NCLEX review that Mark Klimek does, and you can purchase it online on demand. And uh, you can have access to it for a minimum of three months. And then I think you can purchase it for a little bit longer. Mark Klimek actually teaches these lectures. They are uh, on demand, so they're recorded, but they're really phenomenal. You're going to learn so much by taking this NCLEX review. Mark developed it specifically for people who struggle to pass. So especially if you're struggling to pass, I recommend it. And then even if you're not struggling to pass or you haven't taken the NCLEX yet, we do recommend or I recommend the tutoring. I teach one of the tutoring sessions and it's live stream. So you can actually talk to me, see what's going on, ask me questions personally. Mark Klimek teaches two of those live streams. So you can actually meet him and talk to him. And then Dr. Pete or Trevor teaches the other one. And there are obviously there's four. I just told you there's four. And they are also recorded so that if you can't attend the live stream, you can watch them in recording. Or if you attend the live stream and want to watch them again, you can do that as well. So these are some of the products that we offer. And I do recommend looking into them. There's some really terrific products. Even if you don't do those, we're so glad you're part of the Clinic Review family on YouTube. And we do want to support you in passing NCLEX. That's our goal across the board is supporting you in passing your NCLEX and becoming nurses because we really need nurses to provide excellent care. So we wish you all the best as you prepare to take your NCLEX and see you later as part of the family. Bye. All right, we're gonna do a few questions again. I'm not gonna do a ton of questions because I have entire videos already that cover this, but I wanna, I wanna show you how these work. Okay, which post-op client is manifesting the most serious negative effect of inadequate pain management? Okay, we have one patient and the problem in inadequate pain management. One patient, inadequate pain management. And then they say, which is the most negative side effect? Well, the most negative side effect is the unexpected finding. 
because we have one patient with a problem in the question. The symptoms are all in the answers. So we're going to choose the unexpected findings. So let's first decide what's expected and unexpected. Inadequate pain management demonstrates continuous use of call bell related to unsatisfied needs and discomfort. Well, that's expected. Of course, if they have inadequate pain management, they're going to be on their call light all the time. That's expected. So that's not, I'm not picking that one. Develops venous thromboembolism related to immobility caused by pain and discomfort. Well, that's not expected. I don't expect him to develop, develop a VTE. Yikes. That's definitely unexpected. So I'm keeping that on my list. Refuses to participate in physical therapy because of fear of pain caused by exercises. Well, that's pretty expected. If we're not managing people's pain, they're not going to want to do anything, right? That's expected. So A and C are expected. Feels depressed about loss of function and hopeless about getting relief from pain. Well, that's not expected. I don't expect them to have a, a depression and hopelessness from this. Okay. So B and D are both uh, unexpected. So, oh, Sharon, you said I could pick the unexpected one. Well, you can, but now we have to pick what's our higher priority between two unexpected findings. So is there any way we can figure this out? I didn't tell you how to figure this out. So what do you think? Maybe stop the, the video and see if you can figure out how you would do it. Cause I'm getting ready to tell you how you do it. All right. So now I'm going to go to Maslow because Maslow is used with multidimensional problems, multidimensional. And B is a physiologic problem, a VTE. It's an objective problem. D is depression, which is psych and hopelessness, which is spiritual. Psych and spiritual are four and six. Uh, physiological is number one. So do you know what I'm going to pick? I'm picking B. All right, let's see. If you didn't get that right, you need to think about what I said and say, now, how did that work? Why is that? So you need to self-evaluate and evaluate your own thinking and figure out where your thinking isn't right and you need to get it on track to be right. Remember, the NCLEX is testing whether you're competent. They don't, in other words, they don't want you to be negligent, right? They don't want you to be negligent. Negligence means you're do, not doing something that every other nurse would know to do, a, a new grad. Every other new grad would know to address the physiological problem, the VTE, before they address depression and hopelessness. Every other new grad should know that, and so should you. Okay, number two, the nurse is caring for a client with type 1 diabetes who has sustained injuries when she tried to commit suicide by crashing her car. Her blood glucose level is 550 but she refuses insulin. However, she wants the pain medication. What is the best action? So here we have one patient with multiple, with a problem, type one diabetes, but she's also got other symptoms in the, in the question. She tried to commit suicide. That's, that's a psych issue. I'm sorry. Suicide is safety. Um, it's actually safety. Blood glucose though is physiological. Her blood glucose level is 550 and pain is comfort. Okay. So suicide is safety. Blood glucose 550 is physiological. That's objective. That's number one. And then pain is number three. That's comfort. So we have one patient with multiple problems that are in the question. And then it's saying, what's your best action? Now it could say, which order would you implement first or whatever, but it's saying, what would be your best action? So my best action is to address the physiological problem first. What's the physiological problem? The blood glucose of 550. Well, let's see if that answer is there. Notify the charge nurse and make arrangements to transfer to the ICU. No, that's a little extreme. That's really too much. B, withhold the pain medication until she agrees to accept the insulin. That's very coercive, totally inappropriate, a totally inappropriate use of your power. Don't do it. C, give her the pain medication and document refusal of the insulin. Well, that's addressing the pain problem, which is comfort. D, explain the significance of blood glucose and insulin and then call the healthcare provider. That's addressing the blood glucose. So the only one that's addressing the blood glucose is D. So I have to, I have to pick that one. Now you might say, well, but that's not actually doing anything about it. Well, yes, it is. I'm calling the healthcare provider and I'm taught teaching her the significance of this. Okay. So D is the only one that addresses the physiological problem. Three, after change of shift report, which newly admitted patient should the nurse assess first? So I want to choose the unstable patient, the unstable patient. A, a patient with HIV whose CD4 count is 45. 
So what makes a patient unstable? Well, expected findings make them stable. Unexpected findings make them unstable. So A is stable because those are expected. They have HIV and a low CD4 count. You go, well, that's expected. So remember, I don't call the doctor about expected findings. So why would I say expected findings make a patient unstable? I'm, I'm not going to say that. So A is stable. B, a patient with acute kidney transplant rejection who has a scheduled dose of prednisone due. All right. <clears throat> that is to me, that jumps out at me because I say, oh, you can't not take, like you have to be on time with your kidney transplant meds. So I'm going to leave that on the list. See if a patient with graft V host disease who has frequent liquid, liquid stools. I don't know much about graft V host disease, but I don't think of frequent liquid stools as something that is unexpected with that. The only time I would consider that to be a problem if it's a new onset or sudden onset. And I go, oh, sudden onset. I got to think about that. But it doesn't say that. And since I don't know that much about graft V host disease, it's actually a chronic condition. I did look it up because I had to look it up because I didn't know what it was. It's a chronic condition. And liquid stools could be a, a, a symptom of that. So see, there's nothing about that that makes the patient unstable. A patient with hypertension who has angioedema after receiving lisinopril. Well, that's unexpected. Angioedema is an adverse effect of, of uh, ACE inhibitors. So that's unexpected. So now I say, well, I've got, I've got a D is my, is my unstable patient, but B needs to have their prednisone. So how do I decide between those two? Oh man, they need to have their prednisone. So what I say is which patient do I know for sure is unstable? Which patient do I know for sure is unstable? Do you know who I know for sure is unstable? This, the patient who's having an adverse effect. Okay. So you go with the answer, you know, not the answer you're not sure about. And I wasn't sure about B. So I had to go with D. Four, a few minutes after the nurse has given an intradermal injection of an allergen to a patient who is undergoing skin testing for allergies, the patient reports, reports feeling anxious, short of breath and dizzy, which action included in the emergency protocol should the nurse take first. So here I have symptoms in the in the question and the orders are in the answers. I know it says, it doesn't say orders, but emergency protocol is a set of orders, right? So I have symptoms. What are my symptoms? Well, they just got an injection of an allergen as part of the protocol, what they're doing. And they start to have anxious, short of breath and dizzy. Well, anxiety, shortness of breath and dizzy are all subjective findings. That's not stuff that's none of that is me objectively assessing that. They tell me I'm anxious, short of breath, and dizzy. They're all subjective. There's no objective problems here. There's no physiological problems. So start oxygen at six liters per minute using a face mask. Well, they say they're short of breath, so that's certainly an option. Obtain IV access with a large bore IV catheter. I don't, that doesn't address any of the problems in the question. I'm not going to choose it. Give epinephrine half milligram IM. I mean, they specifically told, tell me they're having allergy testing and they're having symptoms of allergic reaction. So I got to keep that on my list. Administer albuterol pleur nebulizer. Well, it doesn't say they're wheezing. And albuterol is for wheezing. So I'm going to take that off my list. So I have to choose between oxygen or epinephrine. Now you might say, well, they're short of breath, ABCs. You're right. If that said hypoxic, if it said hypoxic, I would definitely use the ABCs here, but these are all subjective findings, which means they're telling you how they're feeling. They're not, you're not assessing their O2 sat. And we, I would absolutely prioritize a low O2 sat hundred percent. I would prioritize it just like if it said they had wheezes, I would prioritize albuterol, but there's no physiological finding. So I say, I think they're having, I'm in fact, not just do I think they're having an allergic reaction, Based on what they specifically told me in the question, it's obvious they're having an allergic reaction. So do I prioritize oxygen when I don't have any evidence that they're hypoxic? Or do I prioritize the epinephrine when it's very obvious from the question that they're having an allergic reaction? Y'all, this requires clinical reasoning on your part. You have to know how to use the prioritization strategies because here we're using Maslow and you say, well, how do I know? You have to use clinical reasoning. And the answer is epinephrine because they're clearly having an allergic reaction and none of the symptoms are physiological. It doesn't mean I don't want to address the subjective findings, but the thought it, the, the, you should be able to clinically reason and say, hey, 
the epinephrine should address the allergic reaction. And if I address the allergic reaction, then their subjective findings are going to improve. Now I want to show you a difference in the next question. This is different. A patient with wheezing, which is objective, I hear wheezing and coughing, which is objective caused by an allergic reaction is admitted to the emergency department, which medication will the nurse anticipate administering first? I have the symptoms in the question, the orders and the answers, so I'm gonna use Maslow. Well, they have two physiologic findings, wheezing and coughing. Albuterol three mils via nebulizer, that addresses the wheezing and coughing, so I'm keeping it on the list, methylprednisolone. Well, methylprednisolone is for the allergic reaction, but it's also takes a while to work. So I'm like, all right, well, it's not addressing the specific physiological problems that I'm seeing here. Chromalin via nebulizer, again, that's longer acting. Aminophilin, again, longer acting. The only thing that's addressing the physiological problems, y'all, is the albuterol is addressing the wheezing. So what I want you to notice is that I used Maslow differently if I had physiological problems versus if I had only subjective or comfort problems. You're going to have to think about it for a while and think about that and think about this as you're going through questions. Six, a patient who has HIV is taking nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and a protease inhibitor. Okay, so a person who's got these things is admitted to the psych unit with a panic attack. Which information about the patient is most important to discuss with the healthcare provider? So I have a patient, one patient with a problem. HIV and panic attack, HIV and panic attack. And they say, what's, what am I most concerned about? Or what should I discuss with the healthcare provider? So I'm going to discuss the unexpected findings because I have one patient with, they have two problems, but there's no symptoms here. There's no symptoms in the question. All right. So I have, un, and I have primarily symptoms in the answers. So let's look. Patient exclaims, I'm afraid I'm going to die right here. Well, that's, that's expected with a panic attack. Patient prescribed patient meds include midazolam. I say, well, that's appropriate for panic attack. So, but they also have HIV and they specifically told me the HIV meds they were on. Hmm. All right. I don't know. I'm putting a question mark next to it. C, the patient is diaphoretic and tremulous and reports dizziness. Well, that's expected with a panic attack. D, the symptom occurs suddenly while the patient was driving to work. That's expected with a panic attack. That's what a panic attack is. A, C, and D are, the, are very classic signs and symptoms of a panic attack. So I'm not going to pick, I'm not going to pick the ones I know are expected. So B, is there any reason why I would pick B? Well, I don't know if midazolam is contraindicated with the HIV meds, but they specifically told me the HIV meds they were on. And since I don't know, I know A, C, and D are expected. And I'm not sure if midazolam is contraindicated with the HIV meds, but because I know A, C, and D are not the right answers, I'm going to pick B and it's the right answer, y'all. This was not a particularly easy lecture to understand, I would definitely go back and watch the prioritization lectures that I've done if you haven't already watched them. This is critically important that you understand the difference between the prioritization strategies. So if particularly if you haven't passed, if you've taken NCLEX before and not passed it, or especially if you've taken it multiple times and not passed it, you really need to consider doing the tutoring with us, uh, the small group tutoring, because you're going to get some really great uh, help if you do the small group tutoring. Now, there's one other thing in the blue book that it says, um, and it's about next gen. And it says, in, in a next gen case study, which of the four prioritization protocols is never used? The one that's never used is the stable versus unstable, because stable un unstable is used when you have four patients. And in a next gen case study, you only ever have one patient. So Stable versus unstable is never used in a next-gen case study. All right. Thanks for watching to the end. I hope you have a great rest of your day.